Hey everyone, I wanted to quickly go over the new information we got from Capcom regarding Monster Hunter Rise on the Nintendo Switch. Capcom held a live stream earlier today showcasing the final trailer for Monster Hunter Rise. They also talked about Monster Hunter Stories 2 and gave us a brand new trailer for that as well as the release date. But more importantly, they gave us their final glance of Rise and revealing all the information that was left from the original leak. There's actually 12 talking points that I kind of want to get through as quickly as possible because there was just so much condensed information that they gave us, which is super exciting. Right out of the gate, they started out talking about Monster Hunter Stories 2, showcasing Nerd Gigante and several new monsters that are going to be available in that game that we actually hadn't seen before, as well as the fact that the game focuses mainly on racing a Rathalos egg that can either save or doom the entire world with tons of new writable monsters as well for that specific series. The game is set to launch on July 9th, there's going to be a deluxe edition as well as three brand new amiibos that are going to be for that game. They didn't specify if those amiibos can be used for Monster Hunter Rise, but I'm sure they're going to have some sort of crossover altogether. Overall, you do have to keep it in context, this is a more story based game, it's not like really just farming gear and playing with other people online, it does have a co-op component to it, but in general it's not necessarily like Rise, so you shouldn't go into this game expecting anything similar to that. They then transitioned over to the thing pretty much everyone tuned in to watch, Monster Hunter Rise. And boy oh boy did the leaks basically nail everything down 100%. In my last video, I spoke about the leaks and my predictions on what we would expect to see. And just about every single thing that I talked about basically was covered. From the new monster reveals, Sonogur and Nargakuga, which I specifically mentioned in the last video, and I was just so excited to see them actually being shown, to the release demo day, which is actually next Thursday, the new Rampage updates, the new Silkbind attacks and move changes, the teaser for the endgame monsters, which I'll talk about in a little bit, and even the post-launch DLC with Camellios and even the surprise that we're actually going to get more than just Camellios on the first batch of DLC, which is, whoa, kind of like out of nowhere. They usually just do one monster at a time. But again, I'll talk about that in a bit. Literally everything that I talked about in the leaks video, man, it just came true. So that was really exciting. The trailer basically opened with Sonogre and Nargakuga, the two monsters that we talked about in the leaks. It's worth mentioning that Barith was also shown in the trailer for like three seconds. Uh, they didn't really focus on him at all, they actually never even mentioned him. I do think there's an update of him in the official Capcom page now. Um, so they did show Barath, but you know, they didn't really care to put any emphasis on him. They were basically focusing on Nargakuga and Sonogre, which like I talked about in the past when I talked about the leaks, these are like flagship monsters in, from their own games. Like These are just monsters that, you know, they're fan favorites, people love them or hate them, you know, regarding them on some of the comments. Apparently, Sonogre is not as popular as I thought. In general, it was just like, yeah, they're going to really put emphasis on these monsters. And they even showed this one specific moment of Sonogre fighting a Mitsuzune, which looked really cool. Uh, we saw a similar one with Magnamalos fighting a Rathalos. So, you know, they're definitely uh, focusing heavy on those just like monster to monster fights as you are basically in the middle of a hunt. They then transitioned over to the Rampage, and I have to be very clear. I originally thought that they would actually show like a full hunt. Perhaps that was silly of me since these are kind of like condensed trailer type events like a direct. But they actually just showed like a little bit of a hunt with overlaying and detailing a lot of the stuff like how you lay down siege weapons and how the monsters are coming in and aligned. This is something that I talked about uh, in one of my last videos specifically from the interviews where they spoke about like hey the monsters are actually going to be attacking the village one at a time. But as you get near the end of the Rampage event or the specific quest that you're doing with the other hunters, there will be more monsters attacking all at once. Uh, and eventually it culminates with the Apex monster, the final crescendo, if you will. But they did show the gameplay moment to moment thing that you're actually doing, which is pretty much the one concern or question that I actually had going into the Rampage. Where like, you're basically, you, you are still attacking the monsters, you're still fighting them. But like, you're basically just focusing on like less maximize where are we laying down weapons let's try to pigeonhole them into one specific corner let's you know try to focus fire on this one specific monster those type of strategies are definitely going to come up as people start playing uh these rampage hunts but they didn't talk about actually like are they repeatable by like on a weekly standard or do they level up 
your apex hunts. This is actually something that I talked about in the previous video where maybe they would actually make people hunt them over and over again so you can level up the quest, meaning that the apex monster gets stronger each and every time. They didn't touch on it, so it might still be there, but they didn't really talk about it. But overall, the rampage does seem to be a little bit more engaging than I thought originally. It's not just a direct hunt of like, here, go kill this monster and you're done. It's a little bit more intricate and in that regard is because it does have its own game mode it probably will have a definitely group of people who are going to be able to just focus on that do that and they'll be more interested in doing that than just typical hunter quests that actually allowed them to showcase just about every single one of the new monsters they just kept going and kind of hammering that point home of like we have a lot of new monsters to show you specifically for this game that are not available anywhere else and then actually in one of the trailer moments, uh, specifically the last one, they teased exact what I thought that they would showcase, which was basically one of the two ending monsters, uh, Ibushi Makihiko or Naruhatahime, or in the Western titles, the Wind Serpent Ibushi or Thunder Serpent Narwa. Now to be specific, I don't necessarily know which one of the two that they showed. I'm gonna guess that it was Thunder Serpent Narwa, only because of the color scheme. If we are still thinking that teal means wind and yellowish or reddish tint means thunder, then it does seem a little bit more yellowish to me. So it might have been Narwa because that is a thunder monster and the eyes are also really yellow. So maybe that's it. But either way, it could have been either one. Ibushi Makihiko or Naruhatahime. I don't know. I'm also not going to get into the story elements of like, what do they have to do with the twin sisters in the village? I put out a data mine video a while back. You can go back, check that out pinned in the video descriptions but uh yeah they definitely tease the monster that is like final village one specifically tied to the rampage meaning that the other one is most likely tied to the online gathering hub so basically kind of like what the leak said one of them is going to be tied to the village the other one is tied to the online so in that regard they actually talked about this specifically where they talked about hey you have these specific village quests those quests are specifically designed just for you to be able to play them by yourself or locally with others. Whereas you have these online quests and those are like specifically for you to be able to play with people. They scale up accordingly to difficulty depending on how many people you have in the room. These are all basic things that we need already and things that have been in other games. But they made a big emphasis on like you do have two paths to actually carry out your own experience. You either play solo or you play online, but the game is ultimately tailored to those specific experiences. Then they actually hit on several uh, little things. They talked about the wirebook skills and switching options. This is something that I talked about in the leaks, where I found it a little bit interesting that even throughout all their Twitter posts or even like previous Nintendo Direct trailers or things like that, um, they didn't really talk about the wirebooks and the option that, hey, if you have this wirebook attack to a weapon that you really like, but you don't actually like that wire bug attack, hey, you know what? You're gonna be able to have the option to change it uh, because that wire bug sucks according to you. Well, it doesn't, but if, if you think it does, we're gonna give you the option to actually change it. I, I found it weird that they hadn't introduced that basic concept earlier, but the fact that they did it now, even in the last uh, big trailer reveal, but they actually hit that point. Like, hey, you're gonna be able to change your wire bug skills. They are basically, you know, just different methods for you to be able to hunt efficiently however you want. And that's always a good option to have. So I'm glad that they finally touched on it. This was actually one of the things that I talked about in the previous leaks that I thought they should have hit way earlier than they did. But the fact that they did it anyways is just good to know. They reiterated Wyvern writing and reintroduced the idea of buddies as well, like writing their Palamute or even having your palico around. You know, these are just good things to know. Again, they were just kind of like reintroducing ideas and concepts of like the ways you can play the game and the information you have available with you at all times. So, you know, it's just good for people to be able to feel like they have help at all times. Even if you go online, they actually talked about this in the interview several times of like, if you do go on a hunt and you're playing with other people and you actually do want to engage with the monster automatically, but the other people are actually gathering materials or stuff like that, you do have a buddy with you, whether it's the Palico or the Palamute. You can engage with the monster immediately if you want and don't necessarily feel like you're fighting by yourself. You do have some help. So they are like really focusing on that idea that you're never really alone. Um, so I guess that's good. In that regard, they also showed off the five new zones all over again. They basically gave like a new set of cutscenes for each one. Uh, they went through each one of them and just basically showed them off again. 
Uh, this is something that they kept showing off in the trailers. Uh, I don't necessarily remember if they actually showed them all together at once with the actual names, but they showed off the names as well. So this was really cool for people who actually were expecting a new area and a new zone. This was never mentioned in one of the leaks, but this is actually something that I personally thought that they would showcase at least the uh, new arenas or something similar to that. They always have specific areas or arena stages like stages. Uh, for places where you actually fight like really important monsters um, like the two or four mentioned bosses for example you're probably not going to be able to fight them in the open area they're going to have specific uh, end case scenarios for those fights uh, that's just my speculation but you know they usually have done that in the past so maybe i thought that they would showcase at least one of those but they're probably saving them for later i don't know they definitely made a big emphasis on showing off the new monsters uh, over and over again i felt like they were like really trying to drive that point home as well as with the rampage information when they were showing that they really focused on like trying to just simplify things and just make it like there's a new set of monsters this is a brand new thing not ever available in any of the other games so I do feel like they kind of nailed that idea of just like there's new things to do specifically tied to this game that you've never seen before that you've never experienced in any other game in the series. So if you're like new or definitely returning, there's something new here for you and, um, you know, you should be excited about it. So that always seemed a little bit interesting to me that they just kept nailing on that information over and over. They talked about a few other little things like inviting people online. This is actually something that I put up a video of like three weeks ago where, yeah, you're basically in the online gathering hub and you can just invite people and things like that. You can post a quest. You can decide to just basically start a quest solo, send out the flare, which is now owl. And basically like it appears in other people's lobbies. Uh, they did show up the like system where like if you're basically hunting with other people, you can leave a like after a hunt and you'll be able to be paired up with those people a little bit easier if you remember in previous games you would exchange guild cards with people and then they would appear in your village you could then use that person's like ghost data to be able to just send out on hunts uh, this does seem a little bit similar to that although it doesn't necessarily help you in your offline quests but when you're hunting with other people online and you actually like find good hunters you always want to send them a guild card. They didn't show that off this time, but I do know they have them in the game. So just kind of like leaving a light to someone and be like, yeah, this guy actually knows what the hell he's doing. He just, he's not carding every other three minutes. So let's probably keep playing with this person. So hopefully it just makes it easier for people to be able to find other hunters that are capable enough to be able to just hunt with and pair up with. They also talked about the camera option that you're going to be able to take pictures and stuff like that. I don't think even the leaks ever mentioned this. So I found it interesting that they gave enough time to, hey, you can actually take pictures in a photo mode. I guess photo modes are important now because of Twitter and stuff like that. So, you know, I guess that's cool. But the last two things that they talked about were super exciting. Uh, one of them was obviously the demo reveal starting this Thursday. This is actually something that I talked about in the last video on how they would probably let streamers play the demo first. And then it goes live like an hour and a half or two hours later after the streamers, you know, basically ended up showing it off. It is basically just the same demo with a new quest attached to it. It's still in the same area and you're just basically fighting Magna Malo. Remember that the data mine actually spoke about this originally. It wasn't the original leak. Uh, this was data mined by a couple of people that you'll be able to just have this hunt uh, with Magna Malo. They do say that it is a much difficult higher uh, tier quest. Your gear will be fixed as the previous quests as well. But you're basically just going to be banging your head against the wall against Magna Malo. Uh, I d it doesn't sound like it's going to be an easy hunt. Uh, I do have to say that when I did the online quest uh, with Mitsuzani in the back in the original demo, I didn't have a great time playing online with other people. They were not very good. Not, I'm not saying that I'm a perfect hunter or master hunter or anything close to that. But I wasn't the one carding. Other people were. <laughs> so it's like that thing of like, hey, man, kind of like stop carding so we can actually finish this. And people just kept not healing. So that wasn't fun. I ended up actually finishing a couple of hunts with Mitsusune on with Japanese players. So, you know, maybe if you actually want to be able to kill Magna Malo, look up some Japanese servers and, you know, play with those people. Because... <laughs> Other people seem to be having problem with this game. So that's just a tip, I guess. I don't know. But of course, the last bit of big reveal was actually the fact that there's going to be DLC post-launch. 
I talked about this in the last video specifically, and they showed off Camellios, first DLC monster. Now, the really exciting part about this is that they specifically said that Camellios is one of several new monsters introduced by the end of April. So let's put that in perspective. In every previous Monster Hunter game, they release monsters one at a time. In this game, they're basically saying like, we're gonna release several monsters in the first batch, and they specifically like, are gonna group them all together. Now, if you've been watching my videos, you know that I talked about like, a lot of the first few set of monsters that they're gonna introduce as DLC are Monster Hunter World monsters for the reason that those assets already exist. The monsters that they're building back up from the old games like Camellios, this is a brand new set of assets and movesets and all of that, uh, those are like built from scratch. Whereas like the Monster Hunter world with like Kuluyaku, we got the example of like the Kuluyaku assets from Monster Hunter Rise are the same ones from World. Just a little bit cleaned up and they look a little bit different, but it's still the same assets that they already had in World. So Rise basically is going to use a lot of the same monsters from World, at least the very few sets of early DLC monsters. So we can expect Great Geros and Odogaron. These are the two monsters that I've heard mentioned several times already now and i think this pretty much confirms it at least from my perspective that we're gonna get a lot of monster hunter world monsters as dlc at the very least early on and then they'll probably just start you know building up their returning monster staple as they build up better and cleaner assets for the older monsters now that doesn't mean that they're not gonna introduce new monsters they could certainly do that they did that for world several times over so you know keep that in perspective though a lot of early monsters are going to be from world you'll probably get some new ones returning from the old games and then we'll start to see some new monsters appear as the game gets a bunch of dlc because they even talked about like paid dlc paid like skins um layered armor is what they actually call it faces voices a bunch of stuff so they're definitely going to be like milking this game hard because they know a lot of people are going to buy it so you know keep that in perspective so yeah, that's about it for this video. It's a pretty lengthy one, I know. Um, I kind of just wrote a couple of things down and basically said, let's just try to put out a video because, man, I'm just so excited about this game. They showed off so many things that are super interesting, very cool, and things that I talked about in the past. And like I said before, it didn't ruin my excitement to be able to see so many of these things that I already knew about. If anything, it just doubled my excitement. The fact that I saw something that I knew about ahead of time, it just made me feel good. And um, I'm just so excited for this game. So hopefully you guys are as well and you enjoy this. Remember, tomorrow they're going to have another stream talking about developer interviews. And they're going to talk about a couple other things. They might even show off a new set of gameplay. So we're definitely going to have another set of information tomorrow. So be sure to come back to this channel if you're new and you're subscribing to check out more Monster Hunter Rise information as it all tricks out in this following week. So again, if you're new to my channel, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. And as always, thank you so much for watching. See ya.